to this mega Lord division class event. We're so excited to be here with you in person and online. We're here to worship the God who created the heavens and the earth. So let's join together and shout it out. Hey, 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 hey,
that you will worship. It's what we come to you to give. Come to you to give. Supernatural. Supernatural worship. The like you call us all to live. Call us all to live. Supernatural worship. Now we are born in your spirit. We're born in your spirit. You and through you and to you and to you and to you and to you and more than we can ask for thing. Able to bring healing and signs and wonders and miracles right now. Oh, yes, that same God who created us all, his desire is that we be one as he is one. So today we have the opportunity to be the answer to Jesus' own prayer. Amen? Amen. It says, when two or more are gathered in the midst, are gathered together, sorry, I am in the midst. God is in the midst, right? Mm. And that word for agree includes the notion of joining together with musical instruments. How cool is that? And so as we sing, as we join together, God is in the midst. And he promises that whatever we ask in his name, it will be done. So let us believe. There may be few of us, but online I know we've got some people watching right now. And in the heavens, we've got a great cloud of witnesses, right? So let's believe together for God to do something incredible in our midst today. Amen? And let's sing the song. It's called One.
up. We are
All right. Let us declare that the Lord our God is our provider. You
like the dew on the lawn. They bring refreshment in the still of the morn. Give it too much of the new life that you spoil. We need to open our eyes when you kiss me. We must open our heart to your spirit. Your love and kindness bring in peace in the soul. That love is your Lord. We hear your calling to the lost and forlorn. We need to open our eyes when you listen. We must open our hearts to your spirit. We need to Creation's poverty. Oh, to your presence, knowing that you're for us. God, to the glory and the free gift of salvation. The good news of the gospel for the people of every nation. We go on. Hey, gotta go share your love. ever seen any of those shots of earth from space we'd all agree that it looks so peaceful and serene right and the incredible thing is despite what's going on all over the world the turmoil all of the things that are agitating us the news that rocks us up with all of this pain and suffering and despair and dissension right Our God is the Prince of Peace. The creator of the universe had all of us in mind when he created the universe. How beautiful is that? And his heart, his desire for us is that we all be reconciled to him and live in peace. So let's declare God's peace over our lives over the lives of those that we're believing for, over this nation, over every nation. Let's declare, God, you are the Prince of Peace. And we will worship you. Amen. Dark. 
of peace we worship you never cease to worship you prince of peace we worship you serenity in my soul Everyone, let's sing Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace, we worship you never cease to worship you, Prince of Peace, we worship you. Serenity in my soul. Tranquility overflows as we worship. Yes, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your peace. We thank you for your awesome, awesome peace. Awesome. Well, we are going to smash into today's theme song, Meganauts, which is a word that God gave me, and basically it means to walk on the discipleship journey with God. Walk on the discipleship journey with God. To be an astronaut, you got to do a lot of training. you got to get out there and put the work in, and then very few are chosen, right? To be a meganaut, yeah, we still need to do the training. We still have to put in the discipline. But all of us have been chosen and we simply need to choose to engage. And that's an awesome thing. And so we are declaring this Meganaut's vision of uh, bringing people into the fold and calling them into the discipleship lifestyle. And one of the awesome things about a discipleship lifestyle is that one of our disciplines is praise. And so we're going to sing this praise song and smash it. Caleb's going to get lit. Everyone, this is Caleb, and my name's Esther, Hi. by the way. I forgot to tell you all our names. And we're originally from New Zealand, but we now live in Nashville, Tennessee. And we believe God's called us to the U.S. to be a part of what He wants to do on earth, which He wants all of us to be a part of, right? So let's be and do that stuff and smash into this and sing Meganauts. <laughs> Yeah, you guys like rap? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> you said, do we have a problem? Nah, we gave our lives to the sovereign. Still in death, had us down just like gravity. But the Lord's spirit of life overcame the gravity. You might think that I'm talking about a spaceship. What we really need to ride on the gray ship. Holy Spirit fire, changing our desire. Fix the pain, get the games real deal in your name. Up, 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 up and away. Hallelujah, we're on fire in you. Go, nigga, don't stop ever. Woo! All together, grace crowd checking out. Don't stop ever, all together. We're your Meganauts. You are God and we are not. We only know a little. You know the lot. Show us all what you got. The who, the when, the where, the what, and the what the how. It's you we follow now. Intrepid voyages, picking up the bed that's yours. Death and resurrection experience omnipresence. Powered like a rocket city by rocket electricity, and your grace saved the day. Up, 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 and away. Hallelujah, we are alive in you. Let's go, nigga. Don't stop ever. All together, we're your juggernaut. Let's go, nigga. Don't stop ever. All together, where your mega north. Seated in the mega sphere with you. It's true. Preach the gospel everywhere. Yes, we can do. Overcome by grace. Overcome and praise beyond our space. The rest of our days, we blast off. Woo! Woo! Let's see. Here we go. Let's go, 
all together, don't stop ever, all together, race cross jumping your Well, there we go. That's our theme song. And uh, we are so stoked today to have a special guest in our midst. And I get the privilege of introducing him. I've got some notes here because I want to do justice to this moment. So <laughs> we have a real deal, highly distinguished scientist and born again, Bible believing Meganaut. Bajan Namadi is a principal research scientist at the, I hope I'm saying your name right, by the way. Um, awesome. <laughs> uh, research scientist at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. He received his PhD in high energy physics from the University of Washington. And since 2014, Dr. Namadi has been part of the development team of an exoplanet imaging instrument that will be part of NASA's Roman Space Telescope, scheduled for launch sometime after 2025. And recently, he started his own company, which hopefully we'll get to hear more about today. Yeah. Awesome, everyone. Let's give it up for Bajan Namadi as he joins us on stage. And while he comes up, our interviewer of our guest is our producer, technical director, Real deal, musical, born again, Bible believing, Meganaut, and science OG. Yes, science, ordinary guy. <laughs> My brother Caleb, let's give it up for these two as they share some thoughts. Thank you, thank you. Let's get Bajan a microphone. Nice to meet you, by the way. Good to meet you. It's, uh, I do, we can, we can come forward, get in the camera. So I do love science, but I am totally an ordinary guy. I was, uh, when I was in high school, all my teachers encouraged me to go down the science road and I picked music. So, uh, <laughs> so, but I, yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. There is a lot of science in music. T write that down. No, um, <laughs> but it is, it is, uh, knowledge is obviously super interesting science. And the Bible tells us that the fear of Lord is the beginning of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and science means knowledge. And even though if you go out in the world today, it'll tell you, they'll tell you that God and science don't align. Well, we know that we follow a God who's omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, omnibenevolent, all the omnis. And we like to say, like we did in that song, omniscience instead of omniscience, because we know a little. And I hear from many scientists, they're like, the more you know, the more you know that you don't know, you know? <laughs> And God, on the other hand, is all-knowing. So I would love if you shared some thoughts with us in terms of um, faith and, and science. Being a, you're a big deal scientist. I looked you up on Google. It's amazing. I saw uh, there's a place, I don't know if this is all there is, but there's like 6,000 citations of your work, which I was like, I was like, man, that's high. <laughs> so people respect you and I respect you. So I'd love if you shared, shared on that. I hope you can hear me on the mic. Um, I'll give you this. Okay, we, we try. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, when you ask the man on the street what they mean by science, they mean, uh, they would say it's the study of the natural world. Mm -hmm. And in a way, they have it more right than the technical way that sometimes science is defined. Because when we define science to be only that which would be uh, answered materialistically without reference to God. We divorce science from not just uh, God, but we divorce it from reality. Mm. God created the world according to his unchanging laws. And the fact that they are laws and the fact that they're unchanging is why we have science in the first place. If everything was chaotic, why bother doing science? Tomorrow, you know, things, the apple might fall up, or rather than downward, you know, so we wouldn't give up. But no, it was understood from uh, early on that the world is created in a way that things conform to laws. And there's a law giver. And, and these laws, the more we learn about them, we, the more we, we see about their creator. So in Psalm 19, where it says the heavens declare the glory of God, 
It is very much that way. And the more we, we study the natural world, the more we see how amazing the creator of this natural world is. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it is a, uh, it is a, an honor to be, to be seeking God's laws, to, to be able to do it. And it's a, it's a very Christian thing to do. Mm. In fact, it is the way we glorify God through seeing his handiwork, just like his word says. Yeah. So it's a, uh, it's a great thing to be doing. And, uh, and uh, it is far from the case that, uh, science somehow opposes a knowledge of God. Scientism opposes a knowledge of God, but science does. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's it's very it's very awesome to hear. And I uh, I do like to read science books. One of the books I've read is called The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins, and he's basically the Pope of atheists. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so in our family my one of my closest cousins is uh, his whole family like we're hardcore christians and they're hardcore atheists and so we had our bibles and they had their dawkins books and so they would quote the book and i was like i'm gonna have to read this otherwise i'm just gonna look like i don't know anything and one of the things in the book he admits that creationists like us we believe that there was a creator have something really really strong to argue on and that is the fine-tuned nature of the universe uh there's some things i would probably botch if i described them uh <laughs> but the you could probably do the better like i know if uh the original explosion that caused all the elements if the energy was off by a certain ratio then we wouldn't have all the elements we have and then we wouldn't have life is that you could probably share in way better detail than i can about that yeah, there is a lot there, and, and there are many attributes of the universe. A, a, a very large number of uh, the attributes of the universe are extremely fine-tuned. And uh, the universe is, is old, and its oldness is actually makes it very difficult uh, to, to have it be random. Mm. In the sense that these fine-tuned uh, properties of the universe, the longer you go, the more uh, unstable uh, the answer can become. It, if we are so here 15 billion years after the origin of the universe, everything had to be razor, razor sharp yeah. for us to be able to be here today. And God created a universe that has its laws for the way it uh, developed so that in his time, man would be placed here on earth and that he, we would flourish and be able to not just flourish, but to to look on about, uh, look out upon the universe and see His glory. But to be to be able to do that, everything had to be very fine tuned. For example, if uh, the, uh, the just like you mentioned, the energy density of the universe at the beginning, if it was off by you know a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth, we would either if it was one way, all the stars would move apart. Uh, without ever, uh, all the matter would move apart of, without ever stars being created. Or on the other side, if it was just the other way, everything would turn into stars and collapse and be done in, in a matter of years instead of uh, all the time that it's taken for us to be here. So uh, there's many, many other things like that. There's also just the characteristics of the Earth. The Earth is extremely rare in the way that it, it all the properties that it has. You would not be able to find the science fiction stories tell us you can get into your <laughs> spaceship and find uh, other planets with other people. If you do, you've seen creation miracles yeah. because they're very impossible. <laughs> I was them. actually on Facebook while I was using the restroom because, you know, we all watch Facebook videos in the restroom. And uh, I saw a video of Neil deGrasse Tyson and Joe Rogan, and they were talking about, like, of course there's other life in the universe. Like, it's just a big... We all know it. It's proven, blah, blah, blah. And I was sitting there thinking, I've heard so many non-believers come at me about making claims where apparently we don't have any evidence, where we have a bunch, and they just believe aliens are real. And I'm like, we don't have any evidence at all. Is that is that accurate? There's, there's That's none. right. Uh, back in the 1960s, the estimate was there, were, there would be millions of planets that we would be communicating with um, uh, through radio signals, through the search for extra terrestrial intelligence, the SETI program. 
And now it's, uh, you know, uh, over 50 years have passed. Technology has tremendously improved. Antennas all over the planet. Uh, people on their computers seeking, searching for signals from these antennas. Nothing. Mm. And so from millions, we're down to nothing. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so watching, uh, watching, you know, science fiction, you start, you know, you keep watching uh, th these creatures in the science fiction stories. You kind of think, oh, well. It's in there, so it must be the true. But, but a look at the real um, information that we have from science tells us that we are in a in a very very narrow set of conditions um, uh, had to be formed for us to be here. And the more I mean, we we now have for the last twenty five years been able to see planets around other stars. Mm. And at the beginning of twenty five years ago, ninety five. Well, it's now twenty seven. And in 1995, when the first planets around other stars were discovered, the thought the, the thought was uh, by folks like Tyson uh, that um, okay, we've seen planets around other stars. I'm sure now we're going to be able to, you know, see life in around these planets. And um, now we are a quarter century later, and the more we've learned about these planets, the See that there's almost none of them like are, are like the Earth. Yeah. And in any time you see a headline says Earth 2.0 discovered, <laughs> if you read on, it turns out it's really not. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is what what's some advice you have? Because I have noticed in, in my reading of science stuff yeah. that uh, there is a, a study that will be published and they'll have their findings, true, false, whatever. There's a tendency towards this, tendency towards that. And then uh, the media will cite it. And then you read the headline and you're like, but it doesn't say that in the study at all. And it's just a totally different thing. What, what's that the advice you too have much. for people? Yeah. The main thing is to uh, actually go ahead and read a few paragraphs. Just <laughs> just be bold and read it. And and then you'll see what happens. You know, and, and the basic thing is this, that uh, you get, you know, what we are, uh, our situation is we have a planet with a lot of important characteristics. We have water. We have uh, plate tectonics, we have a magnetosphere, we have an axial tilt that is stable, we have a large moon that holds it stable, we have a star that is a very special kind of star, very stable, energetic star, we're at the right distance from that star. Most of the stars that, uh, oh sure, yeah. Yeah. most there of the go. stars <laughs> that are um, that are sighted, these, these planets, most of those are M dwarfs, and M dwarfs are uh, very red, cool stars compared to our bright, you know, yellow G star. And by the time you can have liquid water on the surface of a planet that is around an M dwarf, you have to be so close that the radiation field of that star kills the life that the um, uh, and that the pa and the planet itself becomes tidally locked to the star. Uh, for example, if you look at the moon. We always see the same side of the moon. We never see the other yeah. side because it's tidally locked. It's it's locked, and we, it uh, and that's because of the relative distance between us and the moon and the masses. And same thing happens with almost all of these planets that they're talking about as Earth 2.0. They're tidally locked, and as a result, one side just uh, you know gets overheated, and the other side freezes over, and uh, all the uh, hydrogen and and water in the planet desiccates away. Uh, these are not really habitable planets. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a bad time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but reading reading a few paragraphs usually handles it. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So to kind of finish off. You uh, you mentioned a little the age of the universe. Now there's some debate in terms of how old things are in the Christian world versus the science world. What uh, what would you say in terms of reconciling what the Bible says or doesn't say because people debate about that with what science says. Well, I would say this, uh, first of all, that the, uh, you know, it, some uh, have feared that an old earth makes room for evolution. Mm. The problem is that Darwinism's wounds can't be healed with time. <laughs> okay, it has, it has serious fundamental problems in terms of the origin of organization and the origin of information mm. time in this world the way god has made this world 
time degrades information and evolution. Ewing's disorder. Mm -hmm. This people talk about the second law. That's sort of related. Second law of thermodynamics. Everything degrades by itself unless you put information back in or energy or you know basically order back in. Yeah. So the random processes over time only degrade. You can't wait and wait and wait and suddenly order come out of chaos. And that is actually mathematically provable, but people just try to look the other way. So, right. so a, a young earth is totally pre the prerogative of the creator. He could create it like that, everything ready. He could also create it a long time ago, but either way, it has to have a act of creation because that order that is in life is not explainable in terms of any random process. Yeah. So, uh, so I believe in an old earth, but not because then it accommodates Darwinism. It doesn't. Okay, Darwinism is dead by itself. Yeah. Uh, it had to. Have been created. <laughs> <laughs> that is, and that yeah, that it, the more you read about secular biologists, often the more you doubt Darwinism. Even atheist biologists are just like Darwinism. That's old. It doesn't work. There's all this new stuff that's come along, and then in terms of the Bible, which is something that I have a little more expertise on than science. So not to get into any of the debate, some people talk about heresy if you're not a young earth creationist. Uh, there's the six-day creation we read about in Genesis. One of the key things you should notice is the sun is made on the fourth day. So if there's no sun before that, how long are the days? We don't know. We just don't know. And so that us not knowing isn't a problem. Us not knowing is like that creates a lot of room for God. So, uh, so I want to say thanks again for coming up. Really appreciate what you said. Everyone, give him a massive hand. Uh, <laughs> great to meet you. And then we have uh, Jean is part of the Discovery Institute, which has some massively awesome material, and we have some right. Yeah, we have some over the merch desk, merch desk. So come by afterwards and we'd love to share, get some resources, and then you can make all your atheist friends embarrassed. Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have the awesome privilege of welcoming to the stage another special guest. Who loves special guests? Yeah. Yep. Special guest. She's young. She's awesome. She's going to sing for us. Her name is Emma Raker. So come on up. And, uh, She's going to sing some songs for us. I hand it over. This song is wrapped up in your splendor. Ooh, wrapped up in your splendor. Your center. Your Majesty. 
next song is called You Are. Part of my testimony is that when I was about six years old, I gave my life to Jesus. When I was about eight, he spoke to me about my purpose and his calling for me, and that he wants me to lead people to him through my music and singing. Esther wrote this song for me to, um, to remember that no matter how old I am, I, I know that I have a purpose and a calling, and so do you. This is You Are. Even though I'm young, only been a few times around the side. I know that I found love, I know that love is true, I know that love is you. Jesus, you are greater, stronger, wiser. You are kinder, sweeter, closer than anything I've ever known. I'll never be alone. Jesus, you gave my heart your Each day, a joy that surrounds me when I pray it's you, Jesus. You are brighter, stronger, wiser. You are kinder, sweeter, closer. You are greater. Stronger, wiser, you are kinder, sweeter, closer than anything I've ever known. I worship you, I worship you, we worship you, we you sing it with me we worship you we worship you we worship you we worship you oh we worship you Any 
sweetest thing I've ever known. Now, if I can have Esther and Caleb join me up here for rap, uh, for We Are the Stars. This is Caleb's we are the stars. favorite song, so he's got to come on up. Jude, get on up here, buddy. <laughs> he's coming. Awesome. Let's all get up. We're going to declare we are the stars. <laughs> I want you, when you hear the words, we are the stars, to go, hey! We are like a lantern, blazing up the pattern, all of us a galaxy. Oh, lighting up the heavens, beautiful resplendent, technicolor tapestry. It's in the darkness that we shine, a message written in the sky. Every heart looking for life, let this be our sign. We are the stars, we're made for shining bright. We are the stars, here to light up the night. We are the stars, hey, we're made for shining bright. Come out, come out, come on into the light. Like a diamond glistens, each in our position, chosen for your majesty. Everyone selected, each bound here perfected, chosen for your eternity. It's in the darkness that we shine, a message written in the sky. Every heart looking for life, oh, let this be our sign. We are the stars, hey. we're made for shining bright. We are the stars, hey, here to light up the night. We are the stars, hey, we're made for shining bright. Come out, come out, come out into the light. We are the stars, hey, we're made for shining bright. We are the stars, hey, here to light up the night. We are the stars, hey. We're made for shining bright. Come out, come out, come out into the light. Light the night, 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 light the night. Keep it up, keep it up. Generate fire. We radiate love and emanate Together, 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 we will dominate the show. Emanate faith. And radiate love. Emanate hope. Together, 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 we will dominate the show. We are the stars. We're made for shining bright. Emma. Great job, Em. So good. Awesome. Well, you guys can take a seat. We're going to get a little bit personal up in here. <laughs> <laughs> and by personal, I mean the next couple of songs we're going to sing are not so much uh, quote unquote praise and worship songs. They're songs about life. And this first song is a song called Meet Me at the Water, which I wrote when I was still a teenager, which is actually quite a long time ago now, which maybe you can tell by looking at me. <laughs> There's that funny moment where you're young and you're in your 20s and people are like, 
oh, you could still be a teenager and they card you and all of that sort of thing. And then there's that moment where you know that you started looking like you're not a teenager anymore. <laughs> and people are like, ah, oh, oh, people will be like, hey, how old are you? And I'll be like, oh, I'm 34. Oh, yeah, that's about right. I'm like, thanks, guys. <laughs> Stick it to the heart, man. So, yeah, I wrote this song when I was, at, what was it? Like, I don't know, 16 or 17 or something like that. I was young. And it was the song that God taught me. More than half your life ago. <laughs> yeah, more than half my life ago. <laughs> this is a long time. But it's a song that taught me and has stuck with me to this day because I had this dry patch where I couldn't write songs. And for me, writing songs was almost a daily thing right? And then I had a month where I couldn't write a song and I was like, God, what's going on? And God taught me through this song that he cares intimately about the details of my life and he cares about what I'm doing. And he was like, I'd like to be part of your process of songwriting. And so I gave my songs to Jesus from this song on. And Interestingly enough, this is a song that made it into the New Zealand top 40. And so <laughs> and so I got government funding to make the music video. In the music video, which you'll see behind us, it features Mahe Drysdale and several other of the New Zealand, New Zealand rowing team, all of whom won gold awards at the Olympics. Um, so we had these open doors and through that relationship, they asked us to write the team song for Rowing New Zealand for the Rowing World Champions. Um, and so crazy things happen when you give your gift to God, right? And so this song is a great reminder of that, even though it makes me feel very old now. <laughs> Let's do it. It's called Meet Me at the Water. Looks really young, man. <laughs> they gave me strange looks as I went to dig my well. The sand blew circles around me. We were in our driest hour. And I dug my hole as if it were good for my soul. Like I needed it to live, to love, to look forward and dream. I cried and screamed, give me something waiting for ages. You quietly said to me, Meet me at the water. I'll take off your shoes. I have been waiting to sit and talk with you. We'll have a conversation. We'll talk about the truth. Because I want to get to know you. Hey! Now the work was done and it was time for chips and fish. I wanted a crab stick and tomato sauce as well and I got my wish. Yeah, we sat and spoke, you gave me a hope. You were actually interested in what I had to say. We smelled so good in our mozzie spray. Trying not to get bit. Oh, 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 me, me, me. me. Hello. 
sing after me. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, hey, 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 hey. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah. We actually had a super sweet miracle happen in the filming of that music video. The guy that was the director was not a believer. And because we filmed it on the lake for sunrise, we had a very small window of time. And we also wanted the sunrise, either that or a really misty day, right? And then we get to the week that we're filming rain forecast the entire week. We're like, oh no, dad keeps declaring to this guy, this non-believer, God's going to give us the weather. (laughs) So this guy is getting more and more concerned, like, man, what are we going to do? Dad's like, we're going ahead, we're going ahead, we're going ahead. The single window of time in that week that it did not rain was the time that we filmed that music video. (laughs) Totally clear sky, beautiful sunrise. You see it shining through several times. And it it was to the point, like, you think when the sunrise is shining that there's enough light, right? But for whatever reason, in videography, they decide that they need more light than the sun. And so (laughs) they had these reflective shields so that my face could be completely blasted with light so that there would be no shadow on my face and you could see the beautiful makeup job that the makeup makeup artist did. And it was so bright that I literally squinted through the whole filming of the music video. So all I can see when I watch our music video is, oh man, I've got three pairs of false eyelashes on and I'm squinting so freaking hard because the sun was so bright. But then we finished packing up and about half an hour later after we packed up, it poured with rain. Amazing, amazing, amazing testimony. So God's pretty cool like that. This next song is another song, a, a personal song, and it's basically the story of leaving New Zealand from my perspective. And, you know, I didn't actually find it that hard to leave New Zealand. We'd heard from God and I was like, okay, cool. It's happening. God made a way that our whole family won the green card lottery. 19 million people applied that year and two of our family were drawn. And it was wild. And it was the perfect two so that all of us could come. It was an incredible situation. And so I was like, oh, yeah, cool. This is a God thing. Sweet. Let's go. And so I left (laughs) and it was a big deal, but I kind of just didn't even really process the fact that I had spent 23 years in one place and then I was just going away from it all. And then we got to the States and reality set in and it was probably way harder to stay here than to leave there. And, uh, (laughs) And this song was kind of when reality set in. And I realized, oh, man, this was this whole situation. And I left my best friends in my life back in New Zealand. But I wouldn't change a thing. So this is called I Didn't Want to Let You Go. All my bags are packed and on the way. All that's left is this here paper trail Breathe the air around me Hold it close Hey, savoring this 
last feeling of home. Final call. You were my last goodbye. Didn't want to let you go These tears that I cried This fear in my mind Didn't want to let you go Didn't want to let you go It's time for goodbye When we need a fly The we wonder why Oh and just So you know If you ever think of me Just so you know, if you ever want to be, oh, just so you know. Awesome. Well, we're going to sing a song called Galaxy of Hope. And this song, we shared earlier a song called uh, We Are the Stars. And these two songs come from this concept in Daniel 12 verse 3, which is the wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who bring many to righteousness like the stars forever. And Caleb's going to share a little more on that. But 
part of this whole Mega Noughts journey is us taking hold of the Great Commission and making sure that every person on the face of this earth hears the gospel, receives the gospel, and becomes a disciple, becomes a Mega Noughts. Amen. And so one of the things that we have done for a long time as a band is to support the mission of Bible translation. There are over 7,000 languages in the world and only a small, small minority of those have a full Bible. The majority of them have only portions and some, many of them, 200 million people have nothing of God's word. And Jesus said that to be a disciple, we must continue in his word. So without God's word, how can these people be disciples, right? And when I was 17 years old, or maybe I was 19, but around that time I was an older teenager, I heard about this mission of Bible translation. And we met with the director of Wycliffe Bible Translators New Zealand and his wife, and they and they told us about how Bible translation transforms nations and communities. It empowers people to become literate. And sometimes the work of Bible translation even creates a written language for people groups. How incredible is that? And when I heard this stuff and I heard of how many people in the world don't have access to God's word in their native language and how much more impactful it is for people to read God's word in their native language, I decided at that point, I have to give my life to tell people about this. And I said to dad, dad, it would be worth it for just one. And Kayla was joking the other day that I wrote that line. (laughs) It would be worth it for just one. We actually have a song with that line in it. And he was like, maybe that's why we always have small crowds. (laughs) 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 And you know what? I believe that I 100% live by that statement. Today's show is worth it for just one. Every show we do is worth it for just one. And uh, everything that we do is worth it for just one. And I get the incredible privilege with my life of sharing the gospel with so many people. And it always impacts people differently. And I've seen so many people reject the gospel. But every time someone chooses to receive the gospel and become a disciple, what a joy. Yeah. What a joy. And so as we sing the song, galaxy of hope, the understanding of the song is is that the wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who bring many to righteousness like the stars forever. When we share the good news, we're like stars in God's eyes. And a group of stars is a galaxy. And a galaxy shines so much brighter than just a single star, right? And when we join together and share the good news, we're like a galaxy. And so we want to ignite a galaxy of hope, and this song is declaring that. So let's sing it.
You know, it's such a joy to sing that song and see Ariana head banging. <laughs> so I should have done it with you, but Ariana, I've had three concussions and every time I do it, <laughs> I regret it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. <laughs> But, uh, but Emma and Ariana uh, have grown up kind of together and coming to our shows. And I remember when they came to one of their first ones and I did the head banging and they wouldn't call it head banging. They, they used to call it hair banging. And they were five years old and they would rage and do the most intense head banging you have ever seen. And I just love it so much. And it's so great to still see you doing it, Ariana. So that's awesome. All right, Caleb, take it away. Thank you. Thank you. I thought I'd sit down, singers. I'm kind of almost too tall for those lights up there. <laughs> but I am wanting to share with you all the connect of the Meganauts, the connect of what we're all, we're all talking about and doing here. So in that Meganaut song earlier, we sang the line, uh, <laughs> we overcome depravity by the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Christ Jesus. So just like... Uh, a rocket ship or an airplane overcomes the law of air, of uh, gravity uh, with thrust and all that jazz. You can overcome the law of gravity, right? So the law of depravity, the fact that we're all fallen humans, is overcome by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's where all this came from. And for me, this all goes back to when I was a teenager too. And part of why, why we do what we do is I was living in the midst of my depravity. Fully in the midst of my depravity, I went on a road trip with a friend of mine when I was 16 years old, and I know that's significantly younger than the drinking age here, but in New Zealand, it's only two years younger. So my friend was 18, I was 16, and he bought us beer. So two of us had 12 dozen beer for about a week and a half. 
So this is ridiculous, right? Very silly, full of depravity. We went to a secular music festival. My parents were fasting and praying for me while I was gone because I was in a troubled time in my youth. And while at this music festival, it was the only day that I had to be sober because I was 16. And while we had alcohol in the car, <laughs> we couldn't consume it. Or I couldn't at the festival because I was 16. They wouldn't let me in. So I had to go and I was sober the whole day. And while I was sober, I was in a mosh pit of 40,000 people. Mosh pit, you know that part at the front of the stage where everyone's bumping up and down? 40,000 people doing that is a lot of people. <laughs> And in the midst of listening to my favorite band, Muse, I had an out-of-body experience where I was before the feet of Jesus Christ. And I was so afraid. Because I grew up in a Christian home. I knew that I'd been sinning. I knew what the law said. I knew that God's law required me to do certain things, and I was intentionally doing the opposite because it was what I wanted. And the crazy thing was, instead of just going straight to telling me off, which God had every right to do, God spoke straight to my heart. He spoke straight to my heart. See, growing up in church, I was like, we're in touch with the Creator. We're telling people that we're in touch with the Creator. And our creativity often really sucks. <laughs> it's so often uh, you go hear some music and it's just terrible or all that kind of stuff is going on. And I was like, man. This doesn't make sense. And God, Jesus Christ was like, you have that on your heart. I don't want you to complain about it. I want you to go and be part of the solution. That's what my church does. And right there and then I repented. And I gave my life back to Christ. And I went through a process. And it's an ongoing process of sanctification. But <laughs> there was a lot in that first week. <laughs> You know, it was like, woo, going for it. And then I got back to I got back from this road trip, started high school, my final year of high school. And all my friends were like, oh, we're going drinking this weekend. And I was like, no. And at this point, I was the guy that got us into all the parties. So I had all the connections with the girls when they were having parties at their house. I would take all my friends along. And they're like, what do you mean you're not coming? Like, where are we going to go if you're not coming? <laughs> and I'm like, I've given my life to Christ. You're going to have to deal with it. And uh, dove into church, got real invested. But as I was saying, Christ was like, I want you to be part of the solution. And if you do that, I'll take you around the world. So I started pouring my heart and soul into making music that I believed fully represented the creative expression of, of God. And that's part of what we want to see. We, we don't want to be, we don't think by any means we're the only ones. And it's awesome to see that so much Christian music has come such a long way, right? Yeah. Like It's awesome to be partnering with No More Dirty, who's promoting music, Christian music today, that in many ways 30 years ago would just be totally rejected by media. You know, It's coming a long way, and it's great news. But that message, that message of overcoming depravity, there are many Christians that are afraid of it. There's a lot of, like... The gospel is positive, but positive only gospel. You have to have repentance in the gospel. When I was depraved and, and full of sin and living away from God, it was being aware of that that drew me closer to God. The goodness of God leads to repentance, and the goodness is that he provided salvation from our sin. If there's no sin, where's the goodness? You know? So overcoming our depravity by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, we have to acknowledge our depravity. We have to repent and turn away. Who's, uh, who's aware of the Hillsong documentary that's come out? It's, there's, some, there's some massive allegations in the mega church world, Hillsong having done a whole bunch of stuff that's pretty disappointing. And then our home church in New Zealand that we, I was in, I repented and gave my life back to Christ and I got heavily involved in a church called Arise Church. They are suffering some massive allegations, much of which seem to be true in the media right now. And part of what's happened is they're, they're really good at affirming people, and we need to do that as Christians. They're really good at speaking life, speaking blessing over people, but they would really, really tiptoe around the repentance issue. And it's in the Bible. 
It's the truth. And in doing that, stepping away from it, things went off track. And so we, we need to do that. We need to be part of doing that. And to tie this into the other songs we're singing, We Are the Stars, Esther was sharing Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Daniel chapter 12, verse 3 says, The wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and they who lead many to righteousness like the stars in the sky forever and ever. We have a world set on trying to be stars. Open up TikTok for half a second. Open up Instagram for half a second. People desperate for attention. Desperate for 15 seconds of attention, you know. Often, often when they get it, it just makes them even more mentally depressed. People are desperate for this attention, but we have in the Word of God, in Daniel chapter 12, what God sees as a star. And that's the kind of star that doesn't fade. That's the kind of star that is eternal. It's secure. It's sure. That's the kind of star that I want to be. And it says, the wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead men into righteous, righteousness. Being wise, according to the Bible, is to believe in God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I would say it's to believe in him and believe him. That's real faith. There's a real interesting scripture in James that says, oh, you believe in God, so do the demons and they tremble. We know we have relationship with God when we believe him, we believe in him, and we believe him. When he says, you're my child, we believe it. When he says, go and preach the gospel, we do it, right? That's, that's awesome faith. And then, just on that line, leading people to righteousness is the other criteria for an eternal star in the eyes of God. Leading people to righteousness. You see, there's a quote that's coming up pretty often from Jordan Peterson. I don't know if you know who he is, but he's pretty famous on the internet, where people obsess over why people are poor, why there's so much poverty, right? He's like, why are you doing that? That's normal. Well, crazy thing is that people get successful because <laughs> that's not normal. If people are left to themselves, don't, don't get educated, don't study, don't work hard, of course poverty is ha- going to happen. It says in Proverbs, much grain is in the fallow ground of the lazy man. You actually have to do something to get out of that. And in a similar way, you turn on the media and it seems like we're all righteous, we're all good, and then something bad happens and it's like, oh, what? It's a big surprise. Jesus came, and you might have heard many things about Jesus, but he came and said, nobody's good. Nobody's good. But the truth that comes along with it is he makes us righteous. He clothes us in his righteousness if we repent from our sin and turn to his ways. We say, we're going to acknowledge the truth. Our ways are wrong. We don't know better than God. And we say, God's ways are better. God's ways are higher. And I'm going to follow that way. And if you do that, you're wise in the eyes of God. And then you lead people to righteousness, which is simply leading people to Jesus Christ. Because he's the only way, the one true way. Leading people to Jesus Christ is to lead people to righteousness. So basically, if you believe Jesus and you lead people to Jesus, you are an eternal star. You are an eternal star in the eyes of God. And those are the eyes that truly matter. Amen. Isn't that great news? Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome news. So I want to give an opportunity. Uh, if you want to respond to that truth online, if you want to respond to that, message us. We're all going to pray. So pray this prayer and then message us. Message No More Dirty. We can get in touch. We want to get connected with you. And we'll pray this prayer commit your life to Jesus Christ. This prayer isn't just saying the magic right words, by the way. It says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, so the heart is a key factor there. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe that the Father raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You can't say the words and neglect the heart. And then, Can't have the heart and not say the words. (laughs) Both of those are in the scripture. So we'll pray together. We will confess together. You believe that in your heart. Then reach out to us. We'd love to connect. If you're in this room, you're praying it from your heart because you're 
and in place that's away from God, then also reach out to us. So everyone pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for what you did on the cross, dying for my sin, paying the price. Thank you, Lord. I declare that you are God. I reject my ways. I repent and I turn towards your ways. I thank you for this awesome free gift of salvation in your mighty name. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> so what we're going to do to end out the night is we are going to celebrate, sing a couple of songs of celebration. Uh, we got some people online. If someone's messaged already, uh, wherever minister Fred is, um, if someone messages and says that, says that they committed that, then make sure you let us know so we can celebrate it right here, right now. Uh, and then if they reach out after, you know, just tell us after. So this is going to come back. We're going to sing some songs and we're going to have a good time. Amen. Oh, Esther can do the prizes. Oh, yeah, there we are. We got some prizes. Yeah, so uh, we are going to first up do a dance off. So, in this song, your first opportunity to win a prize, I want you all to be standing up on your feet as close as you can be to the stage. And your duty is to out crazy one another. You don't have to necessarily have the best dance moves, but you can do the wildest dance moves. Now, I've seen Evan Aker do some wild things in, in his time, and I'm hoping to see some more of that. I've seen Phil Smith do some wild things in his time. I'm hoping to see some more of that. Now, there's some people here, and it's my first time knowing you. And you might feel a little bit of hesitation because we don't know each other that well. But I would say that that moment when you realize, ah, oh, I can dance like a crazy person and everyone is excited about it is one of the free, most freeing moments of your life. So I invite you to that freedom right now. There's freedom in Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so let's be free. Let's do this. It's called Undignified. <laughs>
You two are the two best dancers. So in this last portion, Caleb's going to get the beat going back and we're going to have a dance-off between Ariana and Ian. So you guys, do your craziest moves. I want you to dance like animals, like gorillas and alligators and elephants, and do the weirdest animal dance moves you possibly can. Here we go. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Woo! Hey! Watch out, Jude. <laughs> Yay! All right, so we have Ariana Johnson on the left, or your right, and Ian Aker on my right. When I say each of their names, I want you to share for the person that you think was most worthy. Ariana Johnson. <laughs> Ian Aker. Oh, I think we have a winner, Ian Aker. You are our dance-off champion. Woo! Ian, that's the most I've ever seen you dance at one of our shows before. That was awesome, bud. <laughs> so, so good. Ian is Emma's little brother. So, so good, buddy. Hey, if you go see my mom, Shona, she will sort out a prize for you, okay? Awesome. But do it at the end because we've got another competition so now this next competition is the person, as we sing the song called Crush the Serpent Head Stomp, we're going to stomp on some balloons. The concept here being that we've been given authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. With, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. <laughs> and so we're going to take authority as the finale of the show and enjoy a moment of fun and uh, we're going to stomp on these balloons. And whoever most creatively pops a balloon, they will be in line for winning a prize. So, <laughs> so let's do this. Let's. Uh, we have serpent balloons, but those are coming at the end because they're the prize. Oh, yeah. All right. Can you bring them to the front? This is, this is the prize. Find balloons and during the song, stomp them out. And it'll be great. And finally, here's here's our sweet prize. Oh no, Dad, you failed. <laughs> so these are our sweet. Tiffany, walk in front of the stage and model these beautiful prizes. Look at these gorgeous balloon animals. And created for us by Dwayne Dominey. He's a maestro. So let's all sing the song, Crush the Serpent Head Stomp, and do this. <laughs> you can start right now. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Woo! Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. I want to welcome up Minister Fred, who has graciously had us in his abode in his house today. He's going to close us out. Oh, and as he comes up, I've got to declare the winner. We have two winners. One of them is definitely Evan Aker, who with the force of one hand managed to pop a balloon. And then the other is Emma Aker, who I believe may have popped the most balloons. She was going for it, just stomping, stomping, stomping. So you guys go and grab you yourself a, a snake balloon, a serpent balloon. And uh, awesome, I'll hand it over to Minister Fred. Everyone needs to help clean up. Oh, yeah, and if everyone would help clean up, that would be awesome. <laughs> All right, so did y'all enjoy yourself? Come on, y'all, put your hands together for Mega Knots Vision Blast, featuring, you already know, the duo, natives of New England. Um, I'm gonna ask them to come on up. Come on up, Ever Smith. Come on up. Come on, y'all, put your hands together for, put your hands together for Ever Smith. And we want to say a thank you to everybody that's been, man, I, you know, I don't know if you noticed, I've been getting all kind of hits, man. We had Houston, we had some folk from Germany, online we had some people from la california uh what was it um oh man let me see it was quite a few people basically but um we want to say thank you so much i love what they're doing y'all like what they were doing hey if you really like what they're doing i want you to go online make sure you put some some inputs in and just make a difference and say hey how can they support you now how can they follow you that's what i want to do because whenever we do things with the session and, and um amazing organizations let's get that information how can they follow who's who's going to take the mic Sweet. So everyone can follow us by, uh, we're on Instagram, eversmithev. We're uh, at www.eversmith.band. And you can check us out on Facebook by searching Eversmith. And if you follow any of those things, we're updating those things. And you can check out what we've got, and it will be awesome. Spotify. We're also on Spotify and Apple Music. Pretty much everything we did today was on Spotify and Apple Music except if a couple of the songs aren't released yet. So watch that space. <laughs> All right. So that so what that means is we want you to make sure you be a, you are intentional. And I say this all the time in all of the things that we do, we collaborate. This is an amazing organization. This is amazing. You all rock. You know, y'all, and I'm a hip hop head. And I was like, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So you know what that means. It's, we got to do a collab. So, but anyway, uh, again, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you for the vision of connecting the dots when we talk about the gospel, science, when we talk about, um, I love the unity theme that we're on, and I love the set. I love how you, the energy you all give. So I want you all to take the time to go to their website. I want you to make sure you go online, get all of their music. We'll make sure we post it. It's been streamed and also, and then we'll do a replay as well. Make sure you have a copy. And I want to just pray a blessing over you all. And the good doctor, Phil, come on up here, Phil. Just stand in front, man, because in the original, this cat is one to put to put me on, you know. So, so let's give it up for Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil Smith, this is Pop. This is this is the original right here. And where's mom? Where's mom? Come on, First Lady. Come on, First Lady Smith. Come on, Shona. Yeah, come on. Cause we gonna, we got to get a clap in. This is a family affair, you know what I mean? 
All right, come on, y'all. Put together, put your hands together for First Lady. You already know the business, Smith in the building. Don't let me get loud up in here. I will get loud up in here. All right, and then I want to also ask those that were part of the team, the team, come on up. We want to celebrate all of those that are a part of the this whole movement of the Mega Knots. Come on, come on to the front so they can see who you are. We, we streaming live. This is what it is. This young lady did an, an amazing job. Come on, put your hands together for this. I mean, young talent coming to the building. And then all of the rest of the crew, we got the backup crew, the tech, the, all of everybody, you know, you got the babies rocking too. So, uh, but I want to definitely take the time to pray for you all and just ask God's continued blessings and then we'll get out. All right. And we're going to finish up because we always rock out with some video. So we're going to play their video as a closeout at the very end. So let's pray. God, we want to just say thank you. Wow. Thank you for allowing us to be able to connect dots. Oh, Amen. Thank you for this mega knots, even vision, this uh, this blast. Uh, thank you for Ever Smith, the band. Thank you for this duo that took the time. You, Lord, you brought them all the way from New Zealand to the States. And like they're making a significant difference. So I pray a blessing of a favor anointing. I ask that you would give them favor, open up doors that only you know how to do and do well. And then I ask that you give them traveling graces for to their next point of appointment and their next stop. And then bless them only as you can. We ask that you help us to continue to share the gospel in a very creative way. And we thank you for all those that took the time to listen, to pull up. And we'll be sure to give you the honor and praise in the name of he who makes all things well, who is Jesus Christ, Yahshua the Christ, Aramaic, Hebrew, amen. Come on, y'all, put your hands together one more time for the squad. And I got to say a big shout out to my man, Professor X, always keeping it right on the back end with the crew. That's what's up. Anything else? All right, so we're going to go. We're going to switch over to, we got people meet and greet going now. If you want to come, you can hang for, you, you got another hour, that's it. We got about an hour to come see them before they got to hit the road. They traveling, they on tour. And then after that, you'll get enjoyed us. So blessings, we'll do it again. Peace. Ignite a galaxy of hope 